So this is a Kumquat Wild Ale. Kumquat Wild Ale. Yep. Yeah. What's the base beer on this? So the base beer is a Golden Wild Ale. Uh, I used uh, Kumquats from Florida uh, to age it, but it's a uh, mm. mixed fermentation beer. So there's lactic acid bacteria, uh, lactobacillus amphiococcus, as well as multiple strains for tannomyces. Kumquat's kind of a unique uh, choice, right? It, it, they're, they're kind of tart. They're a little tart. Uh, uh, they can have some sweetness as well. Um, the in beer, I think they work very well because they lend kind of a tangerine, like citrus sure. note. That's that's what you get. Pick up on the nose immediately. Uh -huh. It's a real nice, sharp, crisp citrus. Uh, sure. What was the concept behind this beer? What, what made you think uh, kumquats? Uh, they were in season, <laughs> and uh, and they were they were accessible, and uh, I love kumquats so. Uh, <laughs> Kumquats actually, I, I think, uh, work very well in mild beers uh, because I feel like a lot of the flavors are complementary. But uh, they're, they're also, uh, fortunately, relatively easy to process uh, for use in beer. And, uh, and you actually don't have to use a lot uh, to get the effect that you're looking for. So most of the beers that I do that have fruit in them, I use the fruit to supplement the fermentation sure. characteristics. So I, I describe this as a wild ale with kumquats, not a, not a kumquat beer necessarily. Right. Uh, I certainly could have added more kumquats to it if I wanted the kumquat flavor to be more, more dominant. Uh, whereas uh, the way it is now, I, I'm happy with it because I feel like it's more balanced. Yeah, I mean, it's a beautiful beer. It's like, again, it's that, it's that style that you've got. It's that crisp, carbonated, very carbonated. Um, and it's just it's mouth-wateringly refreshing. I mean, you just want to go back and back and back. And the beautiful thing is, like you said, you've got this really nice base beer and then the kumquat kind of accentuates a little bit of tartness, a little bit of that tangerine, like sure. you were saying, a little bit of the citrus. But it's not that all you're getting is kumquat. It's not like a kumquat juice. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, I didn't want it to taste like fruit juice, you know? Right. I, I like that you can still taste the botanomyces. I feel like you can still taste some of the, uh, the malt that is in the spirits. Well. Right. Uh, it's five and a half percent, so, you know, easy drinking, sessionable. Uh, it's not something that's, that's going to get you wasted, you know? Right. Uh, that wasn't the intent. That's right. And this, again, it's not one of the cores that you were thinking about doing, but it's something that we can expect, maybe a variant of a core. Exactly, yeah. So the Golden Wild Ale, the base for this beer, is a core beer, but uh, but then this one is just uh, just, just a slight deviation from that, just by adding the Golden Wild Ale. Right, and that's the nice thing about the Golden, right? You Absolutely. Can, you can add it. Yep, whatever And that's one of the great things about the Golden, uh, that Golden Ale being down here in Florida, is that we have accessibility to numerous tropical citrus fruits that, that I think lend themselves well to this style of beer. Beautiful. Wild ale of kumquats. Not a kumquat wild ale. <laughs> so now we've got a double IPA, a farmhouse style double IPA. Correct, yeah. Um, and then we were talking about earlier, um, on or off camera, I don't know, but you're thinking about doing 750. So what we can expect to see is bottles like this of your beers. Correct. Yep. Right. So farmhouse double IPA. Interesting concept. What is it? Yeah, so this one, uh, a little different than, than most uh, double IPAs, maybe very different than most double IPAs. Sure. It, uh, it's 100% Britannomyces fermentation, so there's three strains of Britannomyces that I use for the primary fermentation, uh, and then I bottle condition it with a, an additional strain of Britannomyces. And uh, so it's, it's very dry, uh, it finished at 1.4 Plato, uh, so that means that it least consumed almost all the sugar. Sure. Uh, with this beer, even though it's 9.5%, uh, for a double IPA, the bitterness is actually somewhat moderate. It's only 65 right. IBUs. And, uh, and I, I do that on purpose when designing these kind of beers because they do finish drier. Uh, the Brett adds a small amount of tartness. Uh, a lot of people are confused with Brett. They think that it gives sourness to a beer. It doesn't. It can give you a little bit of tartness and give you a little bit of a sharper finish. Uh, and so that's the reason for, for uh, restraining the bitterness on this right. beer a little bit. This beer, right off the... I kind of gave you a look as you were talking because... Right when you put your nose in the glass, I mean the hop, tropical fruit aroma to me is massive. This this has a, a whole lot of uh, to me anyway of that funky pineapple. Yes, kind of aroma. really ripe, and, uh, ripe, ripe tropical fruit. Yeah, and this uh, I, I've talked with some other brewers and they they uh, they, they kind of asked me, you know, how do you get so much red flavor in your beer? And uh, especially in these 100% red beers, there are other brewers making 100% red beers. I think one of the things that I do a little bit differently when I approach these sort of beers is I actually uh, purposefully underpitch a little bit, uh, and I ferment a little bit warmer, and I uh, I pitch active bread, uh, but I but I stress it a little bit during the fermentation. So my fermentations take a little bit longer, 
uh, they are they are slower fermentations, but I think that's where you can really get some of that more characteristic red color. Sure, and it, it's 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 present obviously, but it's really nice to get that hop character in. Uh, in, in, in what I love about it is that, like you said, it doesn't linger on your tongue. It's not killing your palate. It's a nice hoppy beer. It's a big beer. You can tell that too. It's a nice, nice full body, um, but it's not like you drink it and your tongue is just dead from the hops. You get a nice, you get the nice hop profile. Sure. Which is a difference that you know. It's it's nice to have a big aggressive hop forward beer that doesn't necessarily kill your palate. Yeah. And I the agree. bread adds a nice complexity to it too because you've got more to it than just hops. Yep. That's that's what I like about this kind of beer is that uh, I, I'm going a little bit against the style because it's a double IPA. And I, I still try to think of it as a balanced beer, and by that I mean that uh, the hops are in balance with the fermentation characters from the bread. Sure. And so uh, what I really like about this beer is that I feel like I can't figure out where the hops begin, uh, or I should say where the hops end and the yeast begins. Right. Uh, they, they, they really seem, I think, uh, together pretty, pretty nicely. And, uh, I think it makes for a more interesting beer. Sure. Uh, the, the bread strains that I use, uh, like I said, it's three strains for primary fermentation and a fourth for bottle conditioning. And I feel like they, uh, it, it, the, the bread strains have some citrus, tropical fruit characteristics that play off some of those hop flavors. Right. Uh, this beer is dry hopped with Nelson Sauvin and Mosaic, mm -hmm. uh, which can give you some of that, that blueberry, uh, right. white grape type of tropical flavor. Right. Uh, and then in the kettle, I added uh, Zaka, uh, I had some mosaic, I had Amarillo in there. I uh, also had Mandarina Bavaria, which is uh, a hop from uh, Germany, as well as Haller Tau Blanc, which is another uh, new hop variety from Germany. Right. And That's they awesome. Give you, they give you a lot of, a lot of fruitiness, um, and uh, they're, they're hops that aren't, aren't uh, overly used. I, I feel like the, uh, the tropical varieties work better in these kind of beers of bread sure. as opposed to the more piney and dang hops. They're yeah, because they're going to play with these. They're going to play with that hop, that, that bread character. Correct. Right, absolutely. So beautiful. This is another beer that's not necessarily in that core you were talking about. Sure. But something else that we can kind of expect from Odd Breed. Farmhouse Double IPA. Again, beautiful label on this beer. I mean, I, I love the labels. I think it adds to the experience overall. Um, just a really, really nice beer. Excited to have you guys. Thank you. So that's a little sampling of Odd Breeze beers.